Well, hey everybody, how are you today? I hope this finds you well. Today in the pastor's letter, we're gonna be in 1 Samuel chapter six. And this past Sunday was Father's Day and I preached from 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter six on the, the things that the men of Beth Shemesh can teach us. And they were all good things, but I didn't cover verses 19 through 21, which we see sort of a reversal of all that good stuff in 19 through 21 um, because they do something that is just I don't know out of character it's just it, it's unexpected uh, they act like uh, petulant teenagers here because it says in verse 19 that the Lord struck them down because they looked into the ark what in the world's that about what did they think they were going to find of course, we know what's in the ark. The Bible tells us the tablets of the law are in the ark. Aaron's rod that budded is in the ark. The jar of manna is there. It's a witness and a testimony to the people. And in that ark, those things were kept and recorded as to the greatness of God's power. But to get into the ark, they have to remove the mercy seat. So when you do that, you just make the ark nothing more than an idol because it's the mercy seat that's important because that's where the priest goes once a year and only he's allowed to do it, to put blood on the mercy seat for the, to atone for the sins of the people. And they just thought that they could take that off and look in, really? So they, they, they do this really ridiculous thing out of morbid curiosity. And what did they think they were gonna do with what they found once they looked in there? They're just trying to satisfy they're craving to know what did the manna look like? What did the tablets look like? All those, th you know, it's just, it's ridiculous and it's idolatrous because to remove the mercy seat just shows total disregard for what God had provided for them in that piece of furniture in the tabernacle. And then they make this wonderful, I think it's wonderful. It's, it's, a, it's terrifying to them but when we read it, I think it's sort of a wonderful statement <clears throat> because they say there in verse 20, who is able to stand before this holy Lord God? <laughs> and of course, no one is able to stand before him. You know, I, that's why I say it's wonderful because they really understand when God slays them for looking into the ark, they're terrified of him. But instead of being terrified, they should repent, but they don't. And they say, who could stand before this? They should have known that before they ever did what they did. But they didn't. And so they act like the Philistines. And then they say pretty much exactly what the Philistines said there in the previous part of the chapter. They said, who's going to take this ark from us? They wanted to get rid of it. Again, the Philistines, they wanted to get rid of it. They weren't willing to deal with their sin, their idolatry, and all the rest their offense against God, but they didn't know any better. These people know better. And instead of repenting and doing what's right and following biblical order, getting the priest to come and make a sacrifice and offer for sin and the bloodshed so that sin could be removed, they didn't do any of that. They just wanted to get rid of it. Just get it out of here. We're terrified of him. We can't stand before him. Well, nobody can stand before him. That's why there's a mercy seat there so that you can stand before him but they just totally disregarded the whole thing. So look at, the, uh, look at the pastor's letter today, read this passage. And then in the devotion of the pastor's letter, I quote Charles Simeon, who preached the sermon on this very passage. And his words, I think, are a fitting conclusion to the passage. They talk, he talks about the slavish fear of the people as opposed to the repentance of that they could have had. So I hope you'll read that. Look at all the other things there in the letter. Some good music there today. And um, I, hope, I hope I see you guys real soon. So love you. Bye.